decided to be to become a guide uh, when I first travel to Kilimanjaro. I go there I was in 2011. I go there just to see around and to summit. And on the way, I was asking like, why no female guide? Why no, why I don't see female quarters? And they tell me like, this is the very difficult job to do. The women cannot do this. And I tell them like. They can do it because I see them from villages. They carry, they are carrying grass for the cattle, carrying firewood, carrying water a long distance. And this is easy because this is only 20 kgs. And after there, you're going to sleep. Maybe just fetch water. I think this will be good for them. Uh, they keep saying like, you cannot do it. You see how hard it was. And I submitted with with no any hiking experience or anything. Uh, and after the summit, I say, wow, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to be a guide. My ex-boyfriend, father of my son, he is a guide. And once he told me, like, you cannot do what I'm doing. And so I was curious, I have to go in Kili, Kilimanjaro, and see why it's so hard for me to do it. So I fell in love with the environment. It's so peaceful. No internet reception, no mobile phones. You go there, you have good view because you're on top of everything. Then I say, I'm going to do that. I come back home, talk to my father, and he support me to send me to guiding school. Actually, you have to go to guiding school, and guiding school is all about learning about trees, natural environment, animals, all the things tourists want to hear, the culture, the people, and also you go to learn first aid is basic in case of anything because all the all the expedition will be done where there is no maybe hospital close in the bush or in Kilimanjaro where the evacuation is very hard so you have to be trained in medical after that you do the paper exam you go on the mountain for three days you submit it for three days and come back and if you did that you get your license you become a guide before you go to government training you have to go to uh, the college or something for several months or three months it's minimum we pay like almost like 800,000 Tanzanian shillings which is equal to 400 US dollars and from there you go to government training for three weeks and three weeks uh, you have to pay the same amount of money and after you you do the exam you pass they give you the license taken someone uh, she was 78 and her dream is like I have to reach the summit of Kilimanjaro before I die she come from US and she was very slow and I, I remember sometimes uh, some of the guests they tell me like you have to make her descend you are risking her life but for me I was trying to see what she how she's doing physically and I was taking the proper medical examination see the how the heart rate and all that stuff she was so good but she, she was only very slow and for me my work is to make sure her dream come true so I was with her like it was slow but it was good and the good thing about me I do summit during the day I don't summit during the night so we started our summit so we hiked to the stellar point and she reached there Oh, that was funny and very memorable. And she was very happy. She cried a lot. She was having ash, ash from her mom. She, was, she threw the ashes on top of Kilimanjaro. I can see how meaningful it was to her. I start my non-profit aiming to empower women to work in senior position in tourism. If you're a woman here, you are, you are going to have kids and stay home, raise your family and all that. You cannot even go out or uh, some, even some of the uh, women from the village, they, they never been even to good schools or even school at all. So I start on the mountain because on the mountain we need to be very strong. And I can tell you in my community we have very strong women. I select people who can speak good English or they've been to secondary school. I empower them to go to government training to get a license and become a guide. After they become a guide, I tell them like part of the training is you, you work as a guide on Kilimanjaro, you get cash, you go pay for your, maybe go to college to learn more about wildlife. Before even you go to college, you go to driving school, you learn to drive. They think after you come from school, you are not matured enough to, to drive people around. So we have like two years maturity period for you to drive the small vans. Then from there, you go back to school, you learn how to drive the big, 
passenger vehicle. When you are keep walking on Kilimanjaro, you keep driving around and you go maybe to wildlife schools, you know more about animals. Then from there, you start to, f to find a job to work on safari. Part of my non-profit is not only empowering them, it's like make sure they are following the right path to become a safari guide or the mountain guide. We have 6,000 male guides in Kilimanjaro and we have like 42 women guides in Kilimanjaro. And I say like because some of them, they get certificates from guiding school but they don't practice guiding anymore. Maybe, maybe because they are married, some of them if you, are, you get married, you have to quit. Some men, they are not allow you to go out to work. So you choose between marriage and go, going back to Kilimanjaro. I've helped 29 women guys, and it's 29 because they are the ones who are certified, who have a government license to lead the guests. How the other one don't have the license because they are not matured enough to get them, or they cannot go to school and pass the exam. They are part of the organization, but for me, I only mention the one who have a license. But for them, I have special program for them. Maybe they are going up on Kimanjaro as porters. Some of them will send them to English schools or extra language schools. And when they come from there and they, they can go to government training and pass, I send them there. My biggest supporter actually are my family. And I'm saying my family because we are extended family. Uh, we live with, like I live with my aunts, I can live with my uncle, my dad, my niece. It's my biggest supporter is Karen Bowman. She supports my idea from day one. Then I sell the idea to solo female travelers, founders, and they say they are going to advocate that, so they did that. The last group they come here, they support almost now. We are going to have three women more from their part, so it's, I'm so grateful to that. My other male guide who are supporting me when I say like go with this women guide, they say okay bring them. Especially one is, I will call it Othman, he's very supportive. Because when I tell him, please can you help me support this woman because the other company cannot take her. He tell me like, just bring her, I'm going to do that. People are traveling here, they want to have like female guides in their trips. Uh, some of the companies they are using like women image in their website like they are working with them But they are not supporting them. Sometimes they even record them like having their uniform on like work with me I have female porters. They don't even have female porters or female guides If you are booking safari make sure you say like I want to have female guides or female porters But make sure you do the background check you see someone is selling a woman picture there Make sure you ask them like am I going to meet her there? Even if she's not there, we have a lot of women guide now. Make sure you have a woman guide with you. Lori helped me to get the, to pay the, the salary to get the certificate for mountain guide. I met Lori in the college I used again because Lori she was she was the, the graduate of that college. So when she came and she was approached the, the girls because she the one who used to empower the, the woman. So she came to the college and started impressing the girl. If you want to become a mountain guide, I can help and I can do everything for you. So I was impressed and then I contact her and then she helped. My life changed a lot, a lot for for this work. I'm not know like a guide. So I cannot compare this now, how I'm living now and how I was living before. Two different things. Being a guide, and especially the mountain guide, the people they, they used to say it's a, it's a, it's a men's job. So the, the guys used to say, you are a great girl, you are a beautiful girl, you are supposed to, to stay home, why are you coming here to suffer in the cold, with the only seven days without shower, 
you're supposed to to, 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 to stay at home and the men can save the money. And I was like, no, I can do it. It was hard for me to be a guide because back then they were believing that no female guides at all. They can't do this. This is a uh, this job is for men. Since I was a kid, I loved to be a guide. And um, who inspired me was my father because he was a guide. But much which makes me like to be a guide is because I was I want to meet other people from other countries, not Tanzania. I want to be with a more, more friend. To meet a lot of people, yes, to have a friends in different country or different nation. Also, is to enjoy the nature because I can say mountain being in a, 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 a mountain guy. It's give me. It's changed my life because now I'm setting to be. A, Travelers or the, the hiker, being a guide, it, it's my everything.